here, what I want to show is that you can put in a command like show version active and that command will go here as well as to the other sessions that are opened here in the tabs. If you ever use PuTTY to log into the terminal of any device in order to get into the command line interface of the device, then you've probably experienced some frustrations with the application. And in this video, I'll show some of the configurations you can do on PuTTY to make the application a little bit better, a little more easy to use. But really the value is gonna come from some other free software that we'll install, which rides on top of PuTTY and makes managing the different sessions, you know, 100 times easier and increases productivity. The first thing I'm going to do in PuTTY is that I'm going to go to the appearance and I'm going to change the font. I like to have bold and I think 12 should do well. And I'll go back to session and hit default settings. I don't want to hit open, I want to hit save. So for default settings, we hit save. Let's go back and see that it did keep that. So now we'll go to colors and I want to change the default foreground to zero, zero and two, five, five here. And then I'll go back to session and hit save. Don't forget to select the default settings. Now here's, that. that's just things that are um, for the way that the text will look on the screen. And you'll see that in a minute when I open up a session. Now, something that is really, really valuable that a lot of people don't know about is that if you go into logging, you can select all session output, and then you can browse to where you want that to go. And I'm going to put it in documents and I'll create a new folder called, um, I'll call it putty sessions. I'll put an underscore in there. All right, so we'll open up putty sessions and then right here, we have to change the file name to something that will make sure that the files, each time that we log into the server, the file name will have its own name based on uh, the session when we logged in. So it'll have the timestamp or the date or whatever. I've added in what I want the name of the file to be. So this will be the IP address of the host or the fully qualified domain name or whatever, whatever it might be. Uh, then we'll have the year, the month, and the day, as well as the time of the session when we logged in. So we'll save this. We'll go back to session, click on default settings, and hit save. So now, when I log in to a device, it should have those settings. As you can see, the text is a little bit more bold, and it's a little bigger. Also, it has the green that I set it up to have. And let's take a look to see if that's logging into the folder that I created. You can see here the host name and then the date is uh, September 2nd, 2019. And the time is wrong, but that's due to my time being off on the, on the computer. If you're in your production environment and your time is right, then you wouldn't have the issue that I have here. All right, so that's the configuration that I wanted to do on the PuTTY side. Now I wanna show how you can install some free software that makes PuTTY work a lot more like a, a, an application such as SecureCRT. I went to my search engine and I put in Super PuTTY. And now I'm going to go here to the puttygen.com slash Super PuTTY. I'll scroll down a little bit. And right here where it says Super Putty Download, I'm going to get the uh, Super Putty Setup 1.4.0.9.msi. Let's see. Be sure to look for that. It said that it would uh, start momentarily, so you don't have to click on anything on the page. And I'll just wait for this to give me the option to save the file.
accept the terms and agreements. And now I can install Super Putty. All right, select the option to launch Super Putty and then hit finish. Let's see, here we have it. And you'll have to locate your putty.exe. I believe that I have that in my C drive. There's putty. And after you have that, then you can click on OK. So this is what Super Putty looks like. And it imports some of the settings from Putty itself. That's why I made the changes on Putty first, because I wanted Super Putty to import those uh, settings. And then up here, you can create folders. And I'll create a new folder. That will be my cluster one, where I have a couple of different uh, CUCM servers and an IAM and present server as well. So I'll create a new host here and the session name will be publisher. The host name is CUCM hyphen 115.home.lab. And if you want to store the, the username and password, you can do that here in Super Putty. That's one of the things that I like about Super Putty that was not in your traditional bare bones putty setup. And you, you know, sometimes you might type in the username wrong and then you gotta restart putty or, you know, just whatever it is, I find this to be far more simplistic. So for the extra putty arguments, and if you wanna store the password, it's hyphen PW, and then you put in the password, right? Now, this will tell you about how you have to, um, how this is not very secure and that the passwords are stored in a file in plain text. I'm okay with that because it's a lab environment. Now what you want to do up here is go to tools and putty configuration. Sorry about that. You go to tools and options and then under GUI, you have to select this option for allow plain text passwords on putty command line. If you don't check that option, then the password won't go through the username will be provided, but the password will not be provided. So let's go ahead and log in here. I'll say yes, you can see that the bold text, which is green, was uh, carried over from our putty settings. And you can see also that the session is being logged automatically. I want to move publisher into cluster one. Now I'll copy this and I have a subscriber that I'll name sub one. And I believe it is sub a. It has the same username and password. So I'll save that. Let's see if that logs in. It's not going to log in. Okay, so I'll have to take a look at what that uh, setup is. It might be sub one, we'll try that. Okay. So now you can see how easy it is to add devices to this and that it's so easy to see the text here on the screen now with the uh, color change and also with making the change to the font. And then also the extremely valuable logging of your sessions here. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I need to go back and get data from a session that I don't have because I hadn't logged it. That was one of the things that frustrated me a lot. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll take some time to add all of my other devices to this um, Super Putty setup. And then in the end, you can see what it all looks like. But I'll fast forward that uh, here in, in YouTube. I'm now done adding all the different uh, devices that I wanted to add to my Super Putty setup. And I wanted to show some of the features that I enjoy about it. I like that I can right here click on uh, connect all 
and that will fire up all the different sessions here. I also like that on a traditional PuTTY setup, you can do reset terminal and then you have to do uh, clear scroll back. Whereas with Super PuTTY, you have the option to do both in just one. So it makes that pretty easy here. But you know, that's all like stuff that's not all that um, useful, but it is helpful. Um, there are times where I have to log into like a cluster of servers that's 18 different servers and I have to run the same series of commands on all different 18. And I need to keep that uh, output and use it for uh, analysis, troubleshooting, whatever. That's why earlier I'd set up the logging, the def like automatically logging to a text file. Um, but here, what I want to show is that you can put in a command like show version active and that command will go here as well as to the other sessions that are opened here in the tabs. So if I were to open up 18 sessions here using a traditional putty setup, then, uh, you know, I'd have to run that command on each and every single, uh, window that's opened. I'd have to try to make sure that they don't time out. I'd have to make sure that I put the command on each and every single, um, session that I have open. But, you know, this is only a little bit of the features that are available. There's other stuff up here. There's items up here as well. So if you go ahead and install uh, Super Putty, feel free to go ahead and, and uh, navigate around the application and find some of those different features. But this covers the uh, content that I wanted to create today in terms of Putty. Go ahead and comment below and let me know what type of applications you're using to manage, whether it be secure CRT, M Putty, or whatever it might be. And if you're using Super Putty, Go ahead and uh, comment some of the different features that you like about the application. Also, uh, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more content like this. And uh, please feel free to go ahead and share it and let other people know about the type of content that I'm making here.